many people are starting to discover sovereign citizens, but not many actually know what they are. Where did they come from? How did the movement begin? To give you the full picture, I have to take you back in time. This video will be a foundation for future sovereign citizen videos with an explanation of the Constitution, relevant amendments, and the history of sovereign citizens. When I first started this project, I, like many of you, thought of sovereign citizens as the bumbling conspiracy theorists we see on channels like Van Balen in Degeneration Nation. Turns out I was wrong. Sovereign citizens have a very dark history, and this is your only warning. Let's begin. We start in 1776. A group of influential men have been secretly writing one of the most important documents in American history. On the 4th of July, after almost a year of war with Britain, delegates from the 13 colonies vote to approve the Declaration of Independence. In 1781, all 13 states ratified the Articles of Confederation, which outlined an early system of government. Two years later, the war with Britain ended, and in 1788, the Articles of Confederation were replaced with our current Constitution. In 1865, the Thirteenth Amendment was ratified, stating, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude shall exist within the United States. In 1868, the Fourteenth Amendment was ratified, stating, All persons born or naturalized in the United States are citizens of the United States. In 1909, the Sixteenth Amendment was ratified, stating, The Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes on incomes from whatever source derived. In 1946, Wesley Smith formed the Church of Jesus Christ Christian, which promoted the idea that only white people were the children of God. In the 1950s, a right-wing movement was formed called the Tax Protest Movement. They claimed the 16th Amendment was in violation of the 13th Amendment. Forcing someone to pay taxes was involuntary servitude. This movement continued for decades without any real success until William P. Gale a former officer in the United States Army who had reportedly served as General MacArthur's aide during World War II. In the 1960s, he became a disciple of the Church of Jesus Christ Christian, alongside his friend Richard Butler, who would later form the Aryan Nations. In 1969, Gale formed the Posse Comitatus Group, and using a combination of biblical ideology, racist beliefs, and legal knowledge, claimed the 14th Amendment of the Constitution was ratified to strip power away from sovereign citizens, forcing them to submit to the government by refusing to pay taxes or accept government identification. One could free themselves from government control. His preachings were widely accepted, not only by white supremacy movements, but by the tax protest movement, which had gained traction during the farm crisis in the 70s and 80s. With multiple organizations backing him, Gale formed a platform from which he spread his sermons, encouraging citizens to use vigilante justice against government officials who did not support their beliefs. In 1978, William Luther Pierce, the former editor of the American Nazi Party's quarterly journal Nationalist Socialist World and co-leader of the National Alliance, an organization designed to help white nationalists overthrow the federal government, wrote a novel titled The Turner Diaries. The book was about a future race war where homosexuals, Jews, and others were ethnically cleansed in an absolutely necessary war by a group of white nationalists known as The Organization. In the early 1980s, the Posse Comitatus movement changed into the Sovereign Citizen Movement, and it became brutally violent. In 1983, Gordon Call became involved in a shootout with the police after failing to pay his taxes, violating his parole for, you guessed it, not paying taxes. Two police officers died in the shootout, and Call fled. For four months, police hunted him down until they finally caught and killed him in a second shootout, during which one more officer died. Also in 1983, Robert J. Matthews, a member of the Aryan Nations and the National Alliance, formed a group called The Order, an anti-government militia named after the inner leading circle of the organization from William Pierce's novel. They financed themselves by creating counterfeit money and by robbing armored cars throughout the 80s. They protected themselves through violence and even murder. Their goal was to bring about the creation of a white supremacist society. In 1994, the Montana Freeman a variation on the sovereign citizen movement, seized a courthouse in Garfield County, offering bounties as high as $1 million for the county judge, attorney, and sheriff to be brought to them, dead or alive. A year later, police would stop an armed attempt to kidnap the same judge that the bounty had been placed on. On April 19th, 1995, 
Timothy McVeigh, and Terry Nichols parked a truck full of homemade explosives under the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City. The detonation destroyed the north side of the building and damaged over 300 buildings nearby. 168 people died in what is currently the deadliest domestic terrorist attack in the United States. McVeigh and Nichols were actually taken to the trial wearing bulletproof vests because it was believed the public might try to kill them. In 1996, the Montana Freeman made news again when, after failing to leave property they had been evicted from, three members were arrested by FBI agents. Other members of the Freeman barricaded themselves in the property's residence, and the FBI began an 81-day standoff, waiting for them to surrender. Looking at their history, it's clear why the FBI classifies the sovereign citizen movement as domestic terrorism. They might currently lack the organized leadership of the 70s and 80s, but they remain dangerous as individuals. In 2010, a man who is believed to be a sovereign citizen, and at the very least a member of the anti-tax movement, flew a plane to the Austin, Texas IRS building. In 2012, four sheriff's deputies in Louisiana were shot at in an ambush. Two died. The attack was carried out by four sovereign citizens. Searches of their residences revealed multiple illegal weapons and pipe bombs. It was also discovered that two of the attackers were on domestic terrorism watch lists. In 2016, an ex-Marine identifying as a sovereign citizen shot and killed three officers in Baton Rouge. Now, technically, he was Moorish American, and I'll be explaining what they are in another video, but these examples are just the premeditated murders. There are plenty of other reports of officers being killed in the line of duty by sovereign citizens, and their influence is growing again. The FBI is devoting more resources to tracking them again. If you're a sovereign citizen, it didn't work then, and it won't work now. And... If you're not a sovereign citizen, please feel free to like this video, leave a comment down below, subscribe for more content. Have a wonderful day, and as always, be good, stay safe.